Adam Lee? Here. Adamowski? Adamson? Here. Adler? Here. Anderson? Anderson? Here. Bueller? 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 John Hughes was a brilliant director who was born on the 18th of February 1950 and sadly passed on the 6th of August 2009. His work brought the life of a teen to the big screen and made it relatable to those who were in their teenage years. His best work in the 1980s was The Breakfast Club, starring Molly Ringwald as Claire Standish, the most popular girl at Sherman High School. You can see the romance, the teen drama, the mishap slash trouble that happens in the teenagers' lives, and Hughes incorporates it all to make his genre come to life and well-rounded. Hughes uses Miss Ringwald in his movies quite a lot as he understands how she works and how she fits into his genre. Hughes' main genre of teen drama has been adapted over the years by other directors which is clear in films such as The Fault in Our Stars, Twilight etc. However, I feel as though Hughes started it all off and moulded it to fit the time. Throughout his work you can see the genre grow and become something that is consistent, clever and funny. This is clear in some of his other films too, which are also some of his best films to this day. They show the adaptations of his work and how they depict each character's teenage life, therefore presenting his genre teen drama. Hughes' other films such as Ferris Bueller's Day Off 1987 and Pretty in Pink 1986 also show his genre of teen drama and how they have adapted to the time, but also to a teen's life as more problems arise. Not only this, it has been adapted to a more modern day scene as the drama in a young girl slash guy's life becomes broader and more problematic. As seen in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, quality and sick takes a whole new level. Teenagers are hooked on a lie and Hughes uses this to his advantage in his film. It goes around that Ferris has a deadly illness and it makes it believable he uses a keyboard with sounds of coughing and sneezing to create the effect of his illness. How desperate is the situation? Well, did you see Alien? When that uh, creature was in that guy's stomach? It kind of feels like that. Freshman. God damn, are you kidding? No, of course I'm not kidding. Do I sound like I'm kidding? <coughs> Who's he talking to? Ferris Bueller, do you know him? Yeah, he's getting me out of summer school. We appreciate you letting us know how you're doing. We got a buzz. Keep a good thought, dude. Thanks. <coughs> Shit, I hope he doesn't die. Can't handle summer school. Later in the film, Ferris calls his friend Cameron to get him to leave the house. However, Cameron is wallowing in self-pity in bed after having a little bit of a cold. Shredded. Is your mother in the room? She's in Decatur. Unfortunately, she's not staying. Where are you? I'm taking the day off. Now get dressed and come on over. You can't, stupid. I'm sick. That's all in your head. Come on over. I feel like complete shit, Ferris. I can't go anywhere. In the clip, you can see how dramatic Cameron is being and an insight into another part of a teen's life. As the rumour of Ferris's illness gets around the school, it travels to his sister, Jeannie, who was already annoyed by his day off to start with. Hughes really plays on the illness of Ferris and shows how teens can manipulate each other into the drama and play on people's feelings. Teens are easily manipulated and I feel as though therefore Hughes wanted to create the film about something everyone can relate to when they were younger. Not only is Quilling and Sick relatable, but so is the romance. In Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the romance isn't as dramatic as Hughes' other films such as Pretty in Pink, where the love between a young girl who doesn't come from the wealthiest part of town falls in love with a rich boy. However, little does she know that her best friend Ducky has fallen for her also. Although it may not be this dramatic, Ferris has a girlfriend called Sloane who he tricks the teachers to free from her school. What are we going to do? The question isn't what are we going to do, the question is what aren't we going to do. Don't say we're not going to take the car home. Please don't say we're not going to take the car home. Please don't. Throughout the film, you can see the couple and Cameron get into trouble and have the best time of their teenage lives. Hughes tries to not only incorporate the drama of a school life, but the drama that can go on around them if they weren't stuck in school. For example, the three get into a parade and Ferris decides to stand on the float and sing. Cameron Fry, this one's for you. 
At the end of the film, Fairs' sister Jeannie tries to catch him in the act of skipping school like every teen brother and sister would. However, Jeannie has a change of heart when Ferris doesn't get home in time and is caught by their head teacher, Mr Rooney. Jeannie opens the side door to see him and a worn down Ferris, only to tell Mr Rooney that Ferris has walked home from the hospital and thank him for taking Ferris home. Hi. Thank God you're right. You know, we've been worried sick about you. Thank you, Mr. Rooney, for driving him home. Now, I want you to go upstairs and get in bed. <coughs> Scoot! Can you imagine someone as sick as Ferris trying to walk home from the hospital? <laughs> oh, kids. Not every team would be able to get back at their crazy head teacher who tried to break into the house just to see if someone was actually sick. Teachers wouldn't be allowed to do this and so when Jeannie catches Mr Rooney with Ferris, he automatically knows that Jeannie could easily snitch on him, just like most young boys and girls would, therefore causing drama and proving Hugh's genre. In another one of his films, Hughes shows the more romantic side of teen drama. In Pretty in Pink, the romance between a young girl called Andy and a young guy called Blaine is shown to have a dramatic side. It's very clear to see that there is a love triangle that includes the pair and Andy's best friend Ducky. Not only this, but because Andy doesn't come from the richest part of town, unlike Blaine, she finds it hard to believe that he actually likes her. In one scene, you can see the fight between the pair. This shows how dramatic most couples can be, but also shows how Hugh's genre of teen drama can have different aspects. In First Bueller's Day Off, the drama was more about teen life and school than it was about love. On one hand, there's a rich boy who tries to make Andy see that he's in love with her. However, Ducky is also trying to do the same, to show her that he loves her and has been there all along. He does this by going to where she works and sings to her. To conclude, I feel as though Hughes started the teen drama genre and had adapted it to his time in different ways. This doesn't mean that the directors from today's movies haven't adapted the genre to their movies. It's just at that time, Hughes made his films in his own way and they turned out to be classics.